the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning and warm welcome to my brothers and sisters to our very last Sunday of the year 2023. But interestingly, um, this is the very first Sunday in the season of Christmas. We, are, um, we have only one Sunday in the season of Christmas, and then the next Sunday is going to be um, the very first Sunday in 2024, and then that is going to be the baptism of the Lord, as this year um, the Epiphany will fall on, um, falls on Saturday. So this is the day when we conclude our life, our faith life together in the church. And then this is also the time that we invoke the Holy Spirit to come to us for, so that we may bear the much fruit in the years to come. Let us begin this service by offering some prayers of penitence together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we come to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, please be seated for the scripture reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown into it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not. I would not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name. That the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And response to the psalm: Praise, O、oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise. O、oh, praise the name of the Lord, Alleluia! Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights, praise Him, all you angels of His, praise Him, all His host, praise Him, sun and moon, praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise, O、oh, praise the name of the Lord, praise Him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens, let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast for ever, for ever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise, O、oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people. And praise for all his royal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Alleluia. Praise, O、oh, praise the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come. God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under law, in order to redeem those who were, who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, "Abba, Father." 
So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, if you can, would you please just stand for the gospel? says the Lord, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see these things that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a child lay in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, please be seated. Good morning and warm welcome to you again. Um, this is going to be your last day to see these beautiful, you know, the Advent candles and are all lit because um, this year, again, as I explained, um, the, um, the season of, um, you know, Epiphany begins on Saturday. So the next, um, you know, the Sunday, um, some churches um, will actually celebrate as the Epiphany of the Lord. But some churches, um, especially those who are following things on the day, um, because Epiphany is on the falls on the Saturday, um, the following Sunday will be, um, you know, kept as the baptism of the Lord. Um, you know, in our church, we are going to keep next Sunday as a baptism of the Lord, so that we can also do, um, you know, a baptism um, during um, during the service. So that is our plan. So this is going to be the last um, Sunday that we actually, um, you know, watch everything in full swing. But because of the practicality, um, you know, Church Warden will actually explain it later. You may see, um, you know, Christmas trees, you know, next to Sunday, but um, that is something um, for the later. Um, if you see the Christmas, many people um, they may feel Christmas is already finished. Well, unfortunately, I'm one of them. Um, I don't know why, 
but I know this is still, it is the season that we enjoy as Christmas. Um, Christmas lasts, Christmas season lasts, and it ends with the Epiphany, um, which is the 6th of um, you know, January. It's a fixed date. So um, we should be, in a way, in the Christmas mood still. But I think, um, strangely, um, on the day after when we finish the Christmas service on the Christmas Day, um, you know, by the time when we celebrate St. Stephen's Day, which is following day, um, my brain works strangely um, in that way. So I feel Christmas tide has already finished, which is absolutely wrong. I've been sitting and thinking about why I feel in that way. Maybe that's because of the commercial, um, you know, the world out there. It's so commercialized already. Um, but like Halloween. Um, for those who have never heard about this, you know, Halloween is actually the word Halloween coming from, came from um, All Hallows Day Eve, Hallows Day Eve, Hallow Eve, Halloween. So, and All Hallows Day is All Saints Day. So the day when we celebrate all the saints and then to mock all the bad spirit because we are part of this glorious heavenly team and then we just mock the bad spirits and then that's what people, well, you know, people um, you know, doing on the All Hallows Day Eve. But Halloween is so commercialized. It's, it became gone that too far, I think. People don't think about the meaning of All Hallows Day at all, and then they're just mad about Halloween. And then that's why, personally, yes, I do hate Halloween. But still, that's world out there. Christmas, when you go now to the shop, you can see the Christmas shelving is already gone, emptied, because for them, Christmas is finished. It's sad, isn't it? And then maybe that's why after the service on the Christmas Day, my brain works in that way, which is totally wrong. So, today, again, still, um, we are celebrating this Sunday as part of our Christmas joy. I'm going to give you one word. That is the word that can summarize all the messages that we have heard we have pondered, we have enjoyed over this period of Advent and then also the Christmas time. That is, the word is incarnation. The word made flesh. Incarnation is the word that makes a Christian faith different from all other faiths, for example. When we see when we say God, our God in Christian context is different from, let's say, the gods from the Greek myths. There's the two entities in their story. One, God, living up there. Whether he or she does something very strange and wonderful things, but that's what they do. And then another entity is human being. Those people who are living on earth. And then there's a big division in between God and then human beings. So, the gods coming down earth and do whatever they think that's right for them. So, humans will never become God. God will never become human. Of course, yeah, there is a kind of hibernated ones, but still, that doesn't necessarily mean God becomes one of us. But again, through this story called incarnation, Christian faith has completely different understanding and different structure. In our faith, God is not God anymore who sits in the heaven and then to do whatever he feels right and then his life is up there and nothing to do with us? No, that is not truth. In our understanding, in our faith, God came to us in order for himself to be able to save us. And then that is what we heard from our very short but powerful second reading, Paul's letter to the Galatians. In order for him to save us, he came down to us as one of us. 
And then that is the meaning of incarnation. The word, which is also translated in different ways, the Spirit of God came to us and born among us as one of us. So that he, God himself, is no longer God who sits up there and nothing to do with us. But rather, he is God who can be part of our story. And also, we can be part of God's story. In our opening prayers, and especially at the end, um, you may remember what I said. If you can't remember, just to take that um, diffusion with you so that you can um, be offer some, you can um, follow that prayers of the collect and also the post communion prayer. Incarnation is the word that makes us to be able to part of the divine nature. As long as we believe in Jesus' name, what has been promised to us is not just a gift. No, it is a changing of our nature. We're not just sitting here as human beings who are under, naturally, the power of death, but we become someone who can overcome the power of even the power of death because Jesus was born of us and he was fully human like you and me and he himself showed us as a shiny and fine example that God had a plan and God has a plan to save us as long as we believe so if we summarize the whole Christmas wonderful stories into one word, that is incarnation. And then that's why, if you read the order of service, you will be clearly see that in the creed, when we say that incarnatus, that incarnation bits, we bow because of the importance of that message. The word made flesh and dwelt among us. That is a message that we need to be reminded during this season of Christmas. Not just the wonderful lightings or the beautiful candles that lights in the church. So, although um, that we are about to, actually I know it sounds weird, we're about to finish our Christmas you know, the celebrations um, at the end of this week. We're going to finish and we're ready to move on to the next, um, you know, um, next season. Until the Saturday, we're going to be reminded, we're going to think about this message, incarnation. God came to us and then this God is God who will call each and every one of us not to just be a servant of himself, but the heir but we will share the same status with Jesus. We will be called the children of God. So that is wonderful news, wonderful message that we can think about during this season of Christmas. May God continually bless us as we ponder the message of incarnation. And then not just sitting there and enjoying being a part of this story. We actively will live the life with the presence of God. So that at the end, you and I, we may bear much fruit, fruit of the Holy Spirit, which will last. May God bless us. And we say big thank you to our Lord as he became part of our story. Amen. Now, finally, it's a time for us to stand up and we're going to say the creed, which is the statement of our faith together. And also, as I briefly mentioned it, I'm going to encourage you to actually to bow your head down as we say that incarnation bits together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He became incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, please be seated as we offer some prayers of intercession. Let us offer some prayers for the church throughout the world. We pray for the Christian leaders throughout the world, that they may be the source of encouragement. They may boldly and honestly proclaim the good news of the kingdom and of the eternal life. Especially this morning, we pray for the next Bishop of Edmonton, and the St. Jeremiah for himself and his wife Rebecca and his family that he may diligently serve the people in his Episcopal area. We also pray for the Bishop of London, Sarah Mlenny, Archbishops of Canterbury, Justin Welby and of York, Stephen Cottrell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for the world where we live. We pray for the world's leaders, for those who have more power and influence than others, that they may work to promote peace and justice, to protect the oppressed and the persecuted. We continually pray for people in Gaza and Israel, people in Ukraine and Russia. Pray for those who are suffering from any kinds of war and terror, including domestic violence, that one day they may see peace coming to their place. We pray for our King and his Prime Minister. Especially we pray for all those who govern this country. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Let us also pray for this parish. First of all, we pray for each and every one of us who gathered here on this Sunday morning in this church. For all those who are following us online and those who may watch this video as recorded, or recorded service. That we may be blessed and each and every one of us we may live the lives of disciples of Jesus, that we may bear much fruit of the Holy Spirit. May St. George's Church be the sign of our Lord's love, passion, and confidence. We may be reminded 
that this is the house of prayer. That all those who may come and visit us, they may feel the presence of the God in their own lives. We also pray for all those who live and work in our parish boundary. And for all Christian brothers and sisters worshipping in different churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who are unwell in body, mind and spirit. We have been asked to pray for Barbara Baker, Russell Trodman, Paul Alfonso, Cliff Ray, Aileen Walker, Ian Francis, Father Brian McMahon, Hannah Obeiro, Edith Smythe, Janice Page, Michael Burbrugen, and Jim Benson. May the Holy Spirit bring healing and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Finally, we also pray for the faithful departed, for all those who are waiting for our Lord's second coming. Especially this morning, we pray for all the souls of Kirsty Daniels, Jennifer Canoli, and Joyce Ike, recently departed. And for all those whose years mind occur this week, Thomas Anwell, Edward Black, John Hurst, Pat Trotman, Barbara Beaton, Leonard Millist, Jennifer Mays, Duffin White, Elsie Green, Betty Barrow, Arthur Hiscox, Donald Rees, William Smith, Eleanor Howard, Ernest Pickworth, William Kingdom, Florence Jacobs, Edwin Hedges, Elsie Boxall, Hilda Carr, Daryl Sourceman, Charlotte Weir, Rosie Sweeting, Kevin Ritzer, Walford Davis, Queenie Seaborn, and Brenda Williams. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let life perpetual shine upon them. Amen. And also in silence, we humbly commend our own private prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, dear my friends, if you can, would you please stand for the peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Now let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because you sent him to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inherit us of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing, and in confidence may stand before him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and singing. source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you things. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
in the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you things. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Some of you may receive slightly different um, style of host today. That is the square one 
slightly smaller than usual the round ones. And now that is the um, the same host, but that is the gluten-free ones, because we have some stock left. And if we don't use them within a couple of months' time, they are going to be out of order. So I decided to use the gluten-free ones mainly for、um, today. So if you、um, are a bit unfamiliar with them, you don't need to worry about. They are the same host, but just gluten-free ones. Some of you may receive the same. Round shape host, and then they are from the reserved、um, from the Ombri, which has been reserved、um, since the last time that we celebrated Mass. But they are all the same host.
Now let us pray. O Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son shared at Nazareth the life of an earthly home, help your church to live as one family, united in love and obedience, and bring us all at last to our home in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we also say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Excuse me. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. George's. Um, especially if you're here for the first time, you're most welcome. And we'd like to see if you can join us for tea and coffee afterwards. Where at the same time, we will hold our 100 Club draw for the, uh, the month of December. So, yes, we, even at the end of the year. So, after we tea and coffee, we'll we're, um, do the 100 Club draw as well. As Father spoke in his um, sermon about Christmas has ended... I just thought I had a look in my diary at the back of the church. Um, it's only six and a half weeks to the start of Lent. Um, Ash, Ash Wednesday, yes, falls on the 14th of Feb. Normally that's another day, isn't it? But no, Ash Wednesday is certainly more important than Valentine's Day. So there you go. Christmas is ending. It's only six and a half weeks to the start of Lent. So get that in your diary. Um, yes, obviously next Sunday after the service um, we will need lots of help to take unfortunately it has to happen the Christmas trees down um, all the uh, the church ones etc and yes we box them up all the ball balls go in a bag with a number on it yes it's, it's well planned a number on the tree a number on the box and all the lights the batteries have to come out so yes after Sunday next service all hands to the pump to help take down the uh, the trees be very much appreciated. Um, please take your pew sheet with you. There are other messages on the back for uh, this week's services because there's no Wednesday service. So, yeah, please read the, uh, the services and when the normal Wednesday starts back and about the service, uh, New Year's Eve service tonight in the church. So please take your sheet with you. So hopefully see you for tea and coffee and the 100 Club draw after. I think that's it. Thank you. And later in the church, 11 o'clock in the evening, we're going to say um, the Mass here in the church for the New Year's Eve Mass. Um, I don't know how many people may come, so if we have less than 20, possibly we will um, use the Lady Chapel. If we have more than you know, the 20 people, we may just use this space because this is, um, you know, the better, and then this is a light, and we can all sit together um, to, um, to say goodbye properly um, to this year and then to welcome um, the new year. Probably we will do, um, you know, the countdown or something. So um, if you're around, if you can um, um, stay awake, <laughs> you're most welcome to um, come back uh, to the church later at 11 p.m., and then that is um, tonight for New Year's Eve Mass. Apart from that, I hope you enjoy um, the rest of the day and the rest of the week until we see you again next Sunday, which we will celebrate as the baptism of our Lord. If you can, would you please stand for the final blessing and hymn. The Lord be with you. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill and make you partakers of the divine nature and the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Now the Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Now let us sing our final hymn, hymn number 566.